we all know that you are supposed to do something with your hands. You know, everyone knows you're not supposed to grip them like this. Everybody knows that you're not supposed to have your rein, your hand open like this so you lose the reins through your fingers. But really, do you actually know really what the hell you're supposed to do? <laughs> Probably not. So let me talk you through that. Your hand is almost like a communication tool. Everybody says things in slightly different ways. But at the end of the day, people are just trying to articulate what they know so that you can know it. What I'm trying to do is teach you in a more competency-based way so that you end up knowing what I know. So when you hear things like squeeze like a sponge, use piano fingers, that is educated people in the sport with an outcome in their mind, giving you an action to take that, that, that gets you producing the outcome they desire. But you don't know what the outcome is. And that's what I'm gonna teach you today. What's the outcome? Why do we have to do something with our hands? And what does it equal? So your hands, look at it almost like a circuit breaker. We've worked out and we know that the length of your rein is not just about the leather of your rein, it's about your whole arm. So if you think that the length of your rein starts at the bit and goes through to the horse, through to your shoulder rather, your hands are like a reset, a circuit breaker. They're also there to make things a little bit more comfortable, a little bit enticing. Equally, they can be a little bit more controlling. Your hands are there to circuit break what you're asking your horse to do. So for example, let's say your horse is on the bit, okay? And he is on the bit. Factually, he's on the bit. If your judge looks at it, they go, yes, the horse is on the bit. Brilliant, I've nailed it. Great. But, this is the big but, but you're up there feeling, hmm, it feels a little wooden. I feel like, yes, he's on the bit, but he's, he's blocked a little bit in his vertebrae. He's not giving me that final touch that I'm seeking. And sometimes in dressage, that seeking, that feeling, it isn't factual and measurable. It is very tiny. That's where your fingers can come into play. So it might be something very, very simple as just moving your fingers like a piano, like this, which creates a vibration down the bit, down the rein into the bit, which says to the horse, hey, you can relax. You can soften a little bit. So that's where moving your fingers invisibly almost may just give your horse the green light that everything's safe and he can let go a little bit. Moving your hand, let's say your inside hand, in quite a fixed way, closer to the neck. So it might be that you have two reins here. Your inside rein, you might grip ever so slightly more. So you see my two hands here. You can't necessarily see that I'm doing too much, but on this side, it's a strong fist. On this side, it's not, it's softer. You might have a horse that's just a little bit weak and he's struggling a little bit to stay on all four feet. And by closing that fist a little bit tighter and moving your hand closer to his neck, as in our TSMG information, that way you're saying to that horse, you're struggling a little bit here. I'm gonna support you a little bit more to the point of I'm closing that rein and gonna push your shoulder almost a little bit upright. So you can almost lean on that a little bit. This is where I need you to go. Then I'm ever so gently going to let go or loosen that fastened grip as I feel like you've got your balance. The same as you might with a little kid on a, um, on a beam. You know, they might get on the beam on one leg and you hold their hands to help them find their balance. And then you slowly let go until they can stand there by themselves. 
That's another way by closing your hand can assist the horse. You see where this is heading, guys? It's the outcome of what you're trying to achieve that deciphers what you do with your fingers and your hands. A circuit breaker, something to help them, a second communication tool. A horse that's very fiddly in the front, he's diving in and out from the contact, he's moving a lot. Very often a really supple horse that feels amazing actually really struggles with rhythm. So you've got up there and you think, oh, this is an amazing sort of horse. He feels great, but your scores are really low and you're riding your friend's fridge next door and it somehow gets a better score even though it feels like you're literally riding a fridge with a couple of legs. <laughs> that's because of the consistency. So with a horse that's a little bit whoa, supple and wants to be everywhere, having a fixed closed hand may help him find the security of, oh, there she is. A horse that's pulling all the time, that give and take, we've all heard of that give and take feel. By giving, and giving is this guys, I'm turning my hands here so you can see, giving might be my horse is pulling on me, I'm going to give my fingers. That just gave a centimetre of rain and then I'm going to take them again and I'm going to give my fingers. That took us left a centimetre of rain and then we're going to take it again. And what it does is gives him a little bit of space where you're not fighting against him. You're not holding him up. So therefore he has to take the weight off the bridle and find the weight on his feet. But so often we misinterpret give and take with this. <gasps> it's a give or take that's so microscopic that it gives the horse the feeling that if I push on to the bit more, I'm going to fall on my face. So I need to change my center of balance, but not visible. Not that it's actually making his neck longer or shorter. That's your fingers do that. This versus this. This versus this. It's the same thing with the angle. You have a horse that's taking the connection, but he's taking it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and you want to take him out. You might need, our instinct is to bring our hands higher, but actually it might be that you need to put them lower and for a millisecond, watch my hands, change your hand like that. So it flicks his nose out and gives him the feeling that that's where he's got to go. You might find that you put your hand closer to his neck and you close that, that, that fist and that's not quite enough. So you might for a stride or two move your wrist to create, take a little bit more rain or the opposite, release your wrist to give a little bit more space where you feel like he's a little bit blocked. Your hands are the circuit breaker. Your hands are the feeling. Your hands are that last finesse of understanding and communication to your horse that finishes the aid that might not quite be working. So you see guys, it's not sponge your reins. It's not wiggle your fingers. It's not make your reins electric. It's understanding what your goal is when you're applying an aid and how potentially moving your fingers and your hands and your wrists within that aid can give you that final piece that you're missing. Again, guys, this is aha stuff. This is the sort of stuff that can get you from getting grounded in a pirouette to being able to solve it every single step and have the perfectly perfect, perfect pirouette. But what is it? Foundation information, competency-based learning. Dressage is a sport of understanding. If you don't understand the whys, you will never ever achieve the success that you could have. My job is to turn this into a competency-based sport where you can understand the whys, have pass or fail agreements, and in Dressage Institute, you do. We give you tests where you can test your knowledge. So get out on social media, guys. Share this with the world. Help me help you grow. Help me help the world understand that they're not bad riders, that there's just information that they're missing. The more you guys can do this for me, I will give you stuff to say thank you. Rides on my FEI horses, visits in person, 
the, the list is endless. Hopefully we get to such a point where I can give you trucks and actual horses, but you guys need to scream it from the rooftops. So scream it from the rooftops, tag us in so we know you've done it and you're the first people that are gonna get rewarded. Mwah. Bye guys.